I'm beyond stunned. I was beyond wrong. That was simply a shocking, grotesque, nightmarish, no-show performance by Gonzaga trying to complete a season for the ages. Baylor just crunched his ass, smacked him around, smoked him, outplayed him in every possible way. You know, I keep checking the final score of 86 to 70 to make sure it's right because watching it, uh, I thought Baylor won by 50. The dream is dead and it died hard. No national championship, no undefeated season. Gonzaga lost the Gonzaga Invitational and inexplicably cracked under pressure. Jalen Suggs was dreadful. Missed an open three, called for an offensive foul, called for a second foul, and then poof, on the bench three minutes in. Baylor was up 9 nothing before your backside hit the couch last night. Drew Timmy was supposed to dominate. He was overwhelmed playing hot potato with the basketball. Game high five turnovers. Never got on a float. Foul trouble. Corey Kispert, are you kidding me? He kept missing open threes. Mark Fuse team was dead on arrival, and I just can't get over it. Gonzaga had a season low 70 points on a tournament low five threes. They only had five threes. The Bulldogs had 14 turnovers. Simply got bullied on the offensive glass. This was a hot mess in every possible way. I thought this team was different. I thought this team was special. At the end of the day, I don't regret anything that I said previously about Gonzaga because they previously looked amazing. But when it came to slaying the dragon and cutting down the nets, I was absolutely dead wrong. I love Scott Drew. You have to be happy for the seemingly ultra-positive Baylor coach who, as our producer Malcolm pointed out, kind of has a lot of Ted Lasso in him. And that's great because I'm obsessed with Ted Lasso and obsessed with what Drew and the Bears did last night to the Zags. They were so amazing, physical, tough, crashed the boards, imposed their will, played amazing defense, made shots. Jared Butler was simply terrific. 22 points, draining threes. And he had those huge threes at the beginning of the second half. After the Zags went into the locker room, only down 10 despite it feeling like 100. Butler made sure there was no chance of a comeback. Vital was, well, vital on the glass. Flagler and Mitchell, terrific. And listen, this is this is Baylor. And I... I picked Gonzaga, obviously, but I said all year on Time to Shine that I felt as if Scott Drew's team was a top three squad in college hoops with Gonzaga and Michigan. I'm not going to tell you top two, but I said top three. Remember what Michigan was with, with Livers. And look, if it wasn't for the Bears' COVID pause, Baylor might have entered the tournament undefeated too. And how about Scott Drew? Jim Nance absolutely positively nailed it with his final call. It's the greatest rebuilding job in college basketball history. Drew took over a program in 2003, nearly defunct, following the worst possible scandal that included homicide and cover-up and payments under Dave Bliss. And Scott Drew cleaned up the program. He earned this. What a thunderous, incredible Perfect performance by Baylor to win a championship. With the Panthers trade for Sam Darnold, is Mac Jones now a lock to go number three overall to the 49ers? Let's talk this one out. Lock might be a strong word, but I expect Trevor Lawrence going number one, Zach Wilson going number two, and I feel, you know, confident telling Jaguars fans, buy a Lawrence jersey. It's a guarantee that Lawrence is going one. I guarantee that Wilson's going two, and I believe Mac Jones going number three. I absolutely believe that. I believe that because when you trade up, you, at the end of the day, if you're Kyle Shanahan, you want a quarterback to step in and play right away. And listen, with the surrounding offensive talents and Kyle's brilliant coaching, and we talked to Thomas Dimitrov, the old Falcon general manager on the Adam Shine podcast last week, and he said that, and remember, Kyle worked for him in Atlanta, you know, Mac Jones could be Matt Ryan under Kyle Shanahan. So it makes all the sense in the world. And by the way, with the Panthers making the trade for Sam Darnold, that's a signal here because they wanted Mac Jones at eight. So I think in terms of intel and reading the tea leaves, it is, you want to be careful on the word lock, but I absolutely expect 
the San Francisco 49ers to take Mac Jones with that third overall pick. And listen, with that surrounding talent you saw on the board, with the genius of Kyle Shanahan, with that incredible roster, I mean, we could be talking about Mac Jones as the rookie of the year in San Francisco. Mac Jones helping lead San Francisco deep into the postseason as a rookie and maybe even to the Super Bowl. Stop me when I say something crazy. The Panthers general manager, Scott Fitterer, could have been reading from our Time to Shine script yesterday because we literally said the exact same thing on the Sam Darnold trade. He's young. He was a megastar prospect out of USC, and Fitterer can't wait to have him with Joe Brady calling the plays and Matt Rule as his head coach. The Jets were historically inept. Surrounding Darnold with the right coaching and talent. And look, there's precedent here in terms of being over the moon optimistic because do you remember at the end of the day what Ryan Tannehill was under Adam Gase? And Sam Darnold spent two years, the last two, getting ruined, destroyed by the overmatched head coach. Tannehill went to Tennessee and... He played like an MVP candidate in back-to-back years and made the playoffs in back-to-back years. And Sam Darnold is absolutely going to have the same success with the Carolina Panthers coaching staff and the incredible offensive talent around him. And now Matt Rule's team has draft flexibility. Look, they reportedly wanted Mac Jones, who they coached in the Senior Bowl. Kyle Shanahan is likely going to pick him at number three overall. Adam Schefter reported today that Atlanta is fielding calls about teams that want to trade up to four. So Carolina was going at eight to get shut out of the top quarterbacks. And I would rank Sam Darnold very high compared to the other quarterbacks in this year's class. And Phil Sims and Daniel Jeremiah agreed with that when they joined me on the Adam Schein podcast. Remember, Sam Darnold is only going to be 24 years old this NFL season. He's still a baby. I still think he's going to be a star. Now in the draft, Carolina could take a star left tackle or perhaps the best defensive player in the draft. There might not be a defensive player picked before they ultimately have to select the ball player at eight. I don't think Kyle Pitts is going to be there, but my goodness, wow, imagine if he was. And if a quarterback's there, they can trade back. If, let's say, Denver or New England or Washington wants to trade up and pick up extra picks and improve the defense. They now have so many great options because they now have their quarterback. And that's the genius of Carolina making this brilliant trade.